Hey there, everybody. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I hope you all enjoy Kevin Falk's top five anticipated spring 2018 films video. As Kevin Falk was originally going to be there with me, Film Fennel 599 Auburn Wonderer, but he couldn't make it at the last minute, and he already had his list ready to go. So, because of that, uh, Kevin figured he'd just do a solo video, and here it is. So, without further ado, Enjoy the video, and if you guys want to check out his channel, I will leave a link in the description down below. Hey guys, it's Kevin again. Very excited to be on Tony's channel to do the top five uh, most anticipated movies for the first half of 2018. And guys, I always very much enjoy doing these videos. You know, these are some of my favorite uh, videos to do. There are some really great movies coming out in the first half of this year that I'm very excited to talk about. Uh, but before we do that, I do have quite a few honorable mentions, which I mean, you guys probably aren't surprised by that. I usually have, like, tons of honorable mentions. And I don't have a ton. There's definitely a decent amount, but it, it, compared to other years, there's not as much honorable mentions, and that's not because that there's not good stuff coming out, it's just that there's a lot of stuff coming out that I'm probably unaware of, but in no particular order, my honorable mentions, we do have The Commuter, uh, A Futile and Stupid Gesture, that is the uh, National Lampoon film very much looking forward to, um, I don't know when this is coming out, but the untitled Cloverfield movie, I know it's called God Particle, now I think it's called something else, I don't actually know when that's coming out, but A Fantastic Woman, Winchester, The House That Built Ghosts, Game Night, Mary Magdalene, Love, Simon, Tully, Rampage, this just looks like a really dumb, fun movie, I'm hoping that's really all it is, uh, Chappaqua Dick, and finally Game Over Man, Thoroughbreds, Tomb Raider, and finally You Were Never Really Here. And of course, my 10 through 6. Number 10, we have A Quiet Place. Number 9, we have uh, Red Sparrow. Number 8, Nostalgia. Number 7, Early Man. And number 6, A Wrinkle in Time. So coming in at number 5, this was originally uh, much higher on the list, but unfortunately, because of some recent stuff, it did in fact get a bit lowered, but that doesn't change the fact that I'm still hyped for Ready Player One. Uh, this film, like I said, you know, there are so many things riding on this, the fact that it is directed by Steven Spielberg, and I mean, all the nostalgia, I mean, that's enough of a reason to really love this movie. I wasn't alive in the 80s, but it doesn't change the fact that it's still one of the greatest decades probably ever um just in in the world in general i mean there's so many cool things there you know you got the delorean you got fucking freddy krueger i mean there's just so much to love about this movie it's really that second trailer that did lower my expectations just a little bit that second trailer i think showed way too much it focused on a story that honestly did not really interest me all that much at all the first trailer however was mind-blowingly good i absolutely love that first trailer there's so much to love about it it looks so action-packed and very imaginative in that way ty sheridan is also a fantastic actor i've always loved him since mud i think he's really uh, rise to prominence since then, and I'm looking forward to seeing really what he does here. So even though that second trailer did let me down just a little bit, that still, like I said, doesn't really change the fact that I still am very much looking forward to this movie. I think it definitely does have a lot of potential. It could very well just be a, you know, a dud of a trailer. That's happened before. There have been some trailers that just don't really do much of anything for me, and I'm hoping Ready Player One is one of those films where the trailer isn't as great, but the film itself turns out to be really great. And for all those reasons, I still very much am looking forward to it, and that is why it does come at number five. So number four, uh, the X-Men universe may be very confusing, and that very well may be true, but that doesn't change the fact that there are some fantastic films coming out, and one of the most intriguing easily has to be The New Mutants. I mean, there's so much potential uh, in this movie. You know, I've, I've talked about this so many times before, but we are in fact living in an age where we are very oversaturated with superhero films, but the cool thing about that is that every single month we're kind of getting a different different kind of superhero film, and this really is channeling new ground, and, you know, every X-Men movie, we pretty much say that, but this really is, I mean, when was the last time you could think of a superhero movie that was, at least from what I'm gathering in the trailer, a straight-up horror movie? I mean, at least, you know, 
to my knowledge, we really haven't seen some of that before. Sure, there have been things of that nature, like Blade and things like that, but I'm talking about like a major Marvel or DC movie. We really haven't had something like that before, and the fact they're actually going in that direction, I think, is actually really cool. I don't really know too much about this movie at all. All I know is that the, cr the trailer actually really creeped me out. There's a lot of potential in this movie. I mean, Anya Taylor-Joy, Charlie Heen, Maisie Williams, that alone uh, gets me interested to see this. There's just so much writing on this film, for sure. Uh, I think, you know, the X-Men universe, it's, again, it's a very confusing universe overall. It's kind of a genre in and of, of itself because it is so widespread and it is a very broad sort of genre. There's so many sort of like subsections of said universe, um, but... I really do hope this is a very well done film. I've been looking forward to this ever since I saw the trailer. I'm hoping, you know, we, I, I, again, I don't really know too much about it. I kind of want to go in not really knowing a lot. I'm getting a lot of vibes in this movie for sure, and I'm really excited to see how this one does turn out. You know, it looks like, you're, it, it looks like a psychological horror film. That really is the best way to describe it. This looks like a, a great psychological horror film that also happens to be an X-Men movie, and just that in general very much does intrigue me. Is it going to be as twi as you know as um as trippy as Legion? I don't know about that. I think Legion's probably gonna be the, mo the most trippy X Men thing we've seen for a while. This might change that though. I don't know. We'll have to see how this one really does turn out. Like I said, I'm hyped for this film overall. I've definitely been looking forward to it for a while now, and that is why it definitely deserves the number four spot. So, coming in at number three, uh, this film pretty much came out of nowhere the second I heard about it, and ever since I've known of its existence, I've been hyping it up, and that, of course, is Annihilation. I mean, how could I not look forward to this movie? You guys know, well, maybe you don't know. Uh, if you don't know, I absolutely love Ex Machina. I think it's one of the best movies of 2015. It's also one of A24's best films, and ever since I heard that this director is making another movie, I have been absolutely hyped for it. I mean, there's so much potential in this movie. Similar to Immunes, the plot is very vague. I don't really know exactly what it's about. It's about this, like, group of soldiers who's, like, investigating this environmental disaster zone, and only one comes back out alive. That in itself is very intriguing, but then you look at the caster, and you see Natalie Portman, you see Jennifer Jason Lee, and you see Oscar Isaac, Gina Rodriguez. I mean, that is an incredible cast right there. Then you see the director, like I said, the same director as Ex Machina. Then you see all these weird visuals in the trailer, and you get this very eerie sense I mean... There's just, there's so much suspense and so much tension within this film, and I don't really know what exactly this film's gonna be. For some reason, it's giving me, like, a Denis Villeneuve vibe. I don't know if you guys agree, but it's very much feeling like that kind of film. I am very interested in seeing how this does play out. Again, I don't really know too much about I don't really want to know too much about it, but either way, I am so hyped for Annihilation. Ever since I heard about it, I think it looked amazing, and it definitely is something that I have been very much hyped for, so... Annihilation easily, um, for all those reasons, it deserves the number three spot. So, number two, once again, the oversaturation of superhero uh, genre continues, but I don't think any list is really complete without this movie. Number two absolutely is Black Panther. I mean... How could I not have this on the list? Marvel has just absolutely been killing it lately, especially last year. It was probably one of the best years for the MCU in recent memory. It was a great year for superhero movies in general. Well, if unless you were Justice League, then it wasn't really that great for you. But other than that, it was a very strong year for superhero movies. And once again, I say this every Marvel movie, but this does look very different. It's channeling this new ground. It's going for this more sort of underground, urban vibe, and I'm definitely very much into that. The caster is incredible. I mean, you know, you got all kinds of uh, very famous African American actors here, ranging from you know Chadwick Boseman to Daniel Kaluuya to uh, Michael B. Jordan. I mean, there's just there's so many, so, so much talent in this movie. And then you know, even aside from that, you still have like Martin Freeman and Andy Serkis. I mean, just the cast in general alone is enough for reason to look forward to this movie. But then you see the the uh, the cinematography and you hear the score, which the score I'm pretty sure is all done by Kendrick Lamar, which I'm definitely down for. One of the best artists working today for sure. Um, 
You got an amazing score. You got an amazing cinematography. This just looks like another hit for Marvel. I think they're going to knock it out of the park with this movie. Uh, T'Challa, I think that's how you pronounce his name. He was very compelling in Civil War. Uh, Chadwick Boseman, you know, is an actor who pretty much can do no wrong. Everything he does, he's... I mean, I didn't see Gods of Egypt, but uh, I, I don't really plan to ever. But other than that, uh, I, he is a fantastic actor. He really seems to do no wrong, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing how he does in this movie. Marvel, like I said, they've just been killing it lately, and I think this looks like another really solid entry into the market. Probably even more than solid, because their films have really been amazing lately. So, I'm very much looking forward to this. This really looks like that one last building block we need before Infinity War, and I'm really hoping this is a great film for sure. And that is why it is number two. And my number one, uh, for a while this was the number two spot. I'm not gonna lie, Ready Player One for a long time was number one, until that trailer came out. And then it got demoted, but luckily, this is still at number one. And of all the films I'm looking forward to, this is the one I'm absolutely piping up the most. And that is easily Isle of Dogs. I mean, who's not looking forward to this movie? Seriously, there, there's so much potential with this film for sure. First of all, just the fact it's Wes Anderson, that alone makes me excited. He always delivers on all fronts. You know it's going to have great cinematography. You know it's going to have just very witty sort of humor. You know it's going to have some great actors in there. You know, he always delivers on that front. But this film is also very different because it is animated. And it's, you know, stop motion. And it's channeling all this new ground that Anderson just hasn't really covered before. And I think that really is what makes me look forward to this and what probably is going to put this above all his other films. I mean, am I saying this is going to be the best film he's ever done? No. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be possible, but I'm very much looking forward to seeing how this does turn out overall. I think there's definitely a lot of potential with this movie for sure. Um, the trailer very much did make me excited with the dog flu and them trying to track down this one dog. Uh, it keeps playing during kids' movies, and I really hope kids don't go to see this movie because I'm pretty sure this is not going to be a kids' movie at all. It does seem like it is going to get very dark, but it also does have that great humor in there. Really, this just has everything that encompasses a great Wes Anderson movie, and I am definitely very much looking forward to that. So, Isle of Dogs, easily. out of There are a lot of great films coming out this year, but there's no film looking forward to more than and I, at least for the first half of the year, then Isle of Dogs. Every time I see this trailer, I get so hyped for it, and for all those reasons, it absolutely is my number one. And with that, guys, that's really it for this video. Those are all the films, like I said, I am looking forward to for the first half of 2018. Thank you, Tony, once again for having me on. Always do very much appreciate uh, being on this channel. Uh, you guys can check out my channel over at Kevin Falk. I'm sure you've seen it uh, millions of times. I've been on Tony's channel uh, tons of times before, but that's for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, you, Tony will see you guys in his next video, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.